Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and we're gonna jump right in to MVVM in this app. So in this video, we're gonna build out our view model. Uh, we're gonna start it as a state object on the current screen that we're in, and then we're gonna convert it into an environment object so that we can access our view model across the entire environment in this app. Later in this course, we're gonna be adding to this view model. So it's where we're gonna be storing and manipulating all of our data. But for right now, we're focused on just setting it up so that all of our views can get access to it. All right, next video. Hope you guys are ready. Uh, last video, we did a lot of setup. This video, we're gonna actually do some coding. So, uh, let's see. The first thing we wanna do is, let's get the first view going in our app. So in our views folder, let's right click and create a new file. Let's make it a Swift UI view because this time we're gonna actually use a view and need a preview. And let's call this location, locations view. And we'll click create. This will be our like base view for our app with all of our locations. Uh, let's click resume on the canvas to make sure we're still connected there. And of course, we're using MVVM, so we're going to need a view model for this view. Now, we're going to put the view model in its own folder in a second. But for right now, let's just do it in this file. So let's create a class. Let's call it locations view model. Let's make it conform to observable object. That's because we need to observe it, observe this object from the view. So it's conforming to observable object. And then let's initialize one in our view here. And for right now, for this video, let's just initialize it in our locations view. So we'll create an at state object. Let's make it a private var. Let's make it a private var. Let's call it VM and we'll set it equal to uh, locations view model. We're gonna change this in a second because we're actually gonna make it an environment object, not just a state object on this view so that we can use it in the environment. But we're just doing this for this video just to get it set up. So our view has a reference to the locations view model and then inside the locations view model, we need to have some data. So the first thing we're gonna have is an at published var and we're gonna call this locations. And as you could have guessed, it is going to be of type an array of location. This is the, the type that we just made in the last video. And when we initialize this class, so we'll create an init here. When we initialize it, we're just gonna set up this locations variable with all of the locations from our data service. So in here, we'll say let locations equals locations data service dot locations. So these are, this is that array of locations we were just looking at, and then we'll set self dot locations, this variable here, equal to the locations, this variable here. All right, and let's just make sure our locations are actually being set up correctly. So on our view here, I'm just gonna create a very simple, uh, we're gonna delete it in a second, but let's just create a, a list and we're gonna do for each and then we're gonna loop on those locations. So let's use, the, um, let's use this one with just data and content here and we'll do vm.locations. So we're looping on the locations and then we'll press enter on the content and then we should be able to put each location on the screen. And before we type in anything here, we're gonna get a quick error that we are reference, referencing this initializer, which requires location to conform to identifiable. So the location data model needs to conform to identifiable in order to use it in this loop here. So let's do that quickly. Let's go into our location and let's conform to identifiable. Now, in order to conform to identifiable, basically you need some sort of variable inside the struct called ID. And a lot of times you've seen me do uh, let ID and we'll set it equal to uuid.string. And that's fine, this will create a random string and give that as the ID for this location. And that works in a lot of use cases. But this time, if we have two locations that are exactly the same, so if we had the same location with the same name and all this data, uh, and we created it twice in our code, each time we created that same location, it would be giving it a random ID. Uh, this is a random generated ID. So in that case, we might run into a problem because we could create the exact same two locations, 
but they would have different IDs. And because it's different IDs, the compiler would recognize them as different objects. And a lot of times when we have maybe the same two locations or the same two any kind of data model, we actually want them to have the exact same ID. This is the whole point of identifiable. It's so that the compiler can determine which two structs are the exact same, which two structs are different. And it does that based on the ID. So what we're gonna do instead is actually create a computed variable called ID that will still be of type string, and I'll open the brackets here. And then we're just gonna add some logic in here to determine what the ID is. So the ID is just going to be the name, and then I'll do plus and I'll do city name. So for example, really quickly, if we pretend like the name is equal to Coliseum and the city name is equal to Rome, then the ID is going to be equal to Coliseum Rome. Now we're not going to actually use this ID for anything. We're not storing this in a backend database, so it doesn't really matter what the ID is. But the key for this app is, is basically that if we have two locations with the same name but different cities, they would then have different IDs because the second half would be different. Or similarly, if we have two cities in the same city name but different location names, then those IDs will also be different. So we just need to be cognizant here uh, in our apps when we're creating these IDs and how we want to actually create them. More often, this ID is going to be representative of the ID that this location has in your backend. So in the database, it might have a specific ID for this location. But we don't have anything like that. So we're just creating our ID based on the name and the city name. So this way, we could have two models with the same name or two with the same city name. As long as they don't have both the same name and city name, they would be different. All right, long explanation to go over identifiable, but I've found that a lot of beginners are getting tripped up with some of these uh, identifiable, equatable, hashable issues. So we have now conformed to identifiable. And let's go back to our locations view here. So now if I command shift K, we should get that error to go away because we actually conform to it. And let's just put a quick text on the screen here that is uh, the money sign zero, so each location that we're looping on dot, let's give it maybe dot name, and click resume. We're not going to use this actual UI, just want to make sure that we're getting all of our data here. Awesome. Our view model now has these locations, and before we move forward here, I want to make this view model actually an environment object. So right now we're just initializing it in this view, but really I want to initialize it so that all of the views in this app can access this view model. All right, so what we're going to do is basically initialize this state object, not here, but at the beginning of our app. So I'm going to copy this line of code here. Let's go to our app.swift file. So this is the Swiftful map app app.swift. I should not have included the word app in the app title. I'm sorry, guys. That looks really stupid. Um, but when we initialize our app, this is the first thing that runs in our code. It opens up a window group and then goes to our first screen. So let's first initialize our view model at this app level. So before we even get into the app, we initialize that same view model. And then let's go to our locations view first. So here we'll add locations view, open close parentheses. And very simply on this locations view, we're gonna add an environment object. And that object is of course going to be our view model. So now anything that is either in this view or a child of this view will have reference to that environment in which this object will be in the environment, and that is our view model. So now we can use this view model on a whole bunch of different screens that we're going to build. So in our locations view, let's jump to the definition. We now, instead of creating a new view model right here in our code, we're going to pull that one from the environment. So we're going to do an at environment object, and I'll call it private var VM, and it'll be of type locations view model. Now I don't need this line of code, and let's just use this one. So we're not initializing a new one, we're pulling the one that's in the environment and just referencing it in this view here. So if I click resume again, 
we're gonna get a quick crash. That's because this preview down here, this code, does not have a locations view model in the environment. So when we're trying to build it on our app here on the right side, this canvas, uh, it actually can't find the view model. So on our preview down here, we also need to add a dot environment object. And I'm just gonna initialize a new one here. So let's just do a locations view model, open close parentheses. All right, now if we click resume on the canvas, we should still see that the data is pulling through here and we have now put our view model into the environment. All right, I'm gonna take our view model and I'm just gonna cut it and then right click the view models folder, create a new file, Swift file, let's call it locations view model, click create, and let's just paste in our view model here. One more time back to the locations view, let's uh, click resume, make sure it is all still connected. All right, so we now have our data coming through, we have our view model in the environment, and we're ready to start building out the locations view, which we're gonna do in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.